The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9. Verses 10 through 31. Today we head back to the book of Acts in the New Testament of the Bible. Do you remember the name of the guy that was headed on a road to Damascus? Okay, that's right, it's Saul. Actually, who also went by the name of Paul, even right after that. Now Saul was a devoted Jewish man who thought he was helping God by putting a stop to the message of Jesus and his followers. But while he was on the way to Damascus, to have even more Jesus followers rested, Saul was met by none other than Jesus himself, who spoke to Saul and asked, why are you opposing me? Saul had to face the fact that everything he had believed about Jesus was wrong, and that he had actually been working against God this whole time. Saul stood up from his encounter, but there was a bit of a problem. Anybody remember what happened to Saul after he saw the bright light? Think about it. Saul couldn't see anything. He had been blinded. The men who were with him led him into the city of Damascus to the house of a man named Judas who lived on Straight Street. Now, while Saul was having his encounter with Jesus, there was somebody else who had a bit of a life-changing encounter as well. And his name was Ananias. And we meet up with him, and this is where the story picks up. I want to read Acts 9, 10 to 11. In Damascus, there was a believer named Ananias. The Lord called out to him in a vision. Ananias, he said, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. So there were two sides to this story. You had Ananias, a follower of Jesus here living in Damascus, who had a vision from the Lord. And then you had Saul, but their stories were about to overlap. Check out this next verse. Now this is right from Acts 9, 12. In a vision, Saul had seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. See, in other words, Jesus told Ananias that Saul was expecting him and that he would be used to restore Saul's sight. See, well, maybe Ananias had never heard of Saul, right? Maybe he wasn't aware of what kind of guy he was with, so this wouldn't be a big deal. Not likely. Acts 9, 13 to 14 says, Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your holy people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. The chief priests have given him authority to do this. Saul's reputation had made it to Damascus long before he ever did. And the people were terrified of him, including Ananias. And now Ananias was being told to go and find Saul to help him. I'm guessing Ananias was wondering if he was hearing right. Certainly after what God told him next. Acts 9.15 said, But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings, and he will also announce my name to the people of Israel. Saul works for me now. He is going to carry my name to the Gentiles, those that were not Jews, as well as people of Israel. Wow, this is quite a shocker. Let's play a little, what do they do next? This is a pretty pivotal point in the story and Ananias had just been asked to do a pretty big thing. So, what do they do next? All right, question number one. After the Lord told Ananias to go find Saul, did Ananias A, turn up the music really loud and pretend that he hadn't heard the Lord speaking, B, pack up quietly, move far away from Damascus, and change his name to Clarence. Or C, do what the Lord said and go to the house where Saul was. What do you think? 
Maybe make up your mind? A, B, C? All right, let's find out. Though he may have wanted to do A or B, yes, he did C. You got it right. Let's keep reading. Acts 9, 17, A, the first part says this. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. He placed his hands on Saul. But what did they do next? All right, question number two. I want to give you a few more choices to see if you're catching on to this. Ananias placed his hands on Saul and A, told him all the terrible things he had done and called him a bunch of names I can't repeat here. B, put him in a sleeper hold he had learned while watching professional wrestling. Sounds good. C, retold the story of what had happened on the road and prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What do you think? Do you know the answer? I know what I want it to be, but do you know the answer? Here's the answer. Though a sleeper hold might have been tempting, yes, he did see. Retold the story of what had happened on the road and prayed for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, let's just keep reading. Acts 9, 17 to 19. Let's pick up where we left off. Brother Saul, he said, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right away, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. After eating some food, he got his strength back. Just like Jesus had said, God used Ananias to restore Saul's sight, but things were just getting started. Now, does anybody remember why Saul was coming to Damascus in the first place? Can you remember that from the very beginning? Originally, he was headed there to go into the synagogues, which was the main meeting place, and to arrest as many of Jesus' followers and bring them back to Jerusalem. Well, Saul still went to the synagogues in Damascus, but check out the difference. Acts 9, 19, 20, we pick up and it says, Saul spent several days with the believers in Damascus. Right away, he began to preach in the synagogues. He taught that Jesus is the Son of God. He still went into the synagogues, but his message had completely changed. He began to prove that Jesus really is who he claimed to be, and the people were all shocked. Remember, just like Ananias, many of the people knew Saul's reputation. This wasn't what they were expecting at all. But Saul continued to prove that Jesus is the Messiah to the amazement of the people. And this, however, did not go over so well with the Jewish leaders living in Damascus. Check this out. Acts 9, 23 to 24 says, After many days, the Jews had a meeting. They planned to kill Saul. But he learned about their plan. Day and night, they watched the city gates closely in order to kill him. Whoa! Intense, right? So, let me ask this. What did they do next? Here's your third question. When Saul learned about the plot to kill him, A, he revealed that the whole thing was a setup and that he wasn't really a follower of Jesus. B, he called into action the elite band of camels he had secretly trained to defend him. I like that one. Or C, his followers lowered him in a basket through the city wall under the cover of night. What do you think? Well, the answer for this, I know all of these actually kind of sound crazy, right? But it's actually C, his followers lowered him in a basket. Check it out. Acts 9, 25 picks up and says this. But his followers helped him escape by night. They lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. So where did he go then? They wanted him dead in Damascus. Well, Saul headed back to Jerusalem. But remember, the last time he had left Jerusalem, he had been completely against the followers of Jesus, terrorizing them and everything they stood for. How would they receive him? In other words, what did they do next? <laughs> All right, I wanna ask the question, what do they do next? And I need your help. This is question number four. When Saul tried to join the believers in Jerusalem, they, A, 
received him warmly and were thankful for the amazing work God had done. It's nice, right? B, handed him back over to the leaders of Damascus to suffer the consequences. Punishment. Or C, were all afraid of him and didn't believe he was really a follower of Jesus. Mm, double agent, you say. What do you all think? Let's see if you're right. The answer for question number four is this. It's a bit tricky, but I'd like to say it was A. But actually, it's not. It's still C. They didn't receive him. They were terrified and didn't believe he was actually one of Jesus' followers. That was until a man named Barnabas bravely spoke up for him. And we read it here. Acts 9, 26, 27 continues the story and says, When Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the believers. But they were all afraid of him. Remember what he used to do? They didn't believe he was really one of Jesus' followers. But Barnabas took him to the apostles. He told them about Saul's journey. He said that Saul had seen the Lord. And he told how the Lord had spoken to Saul. Barnabas also said that Saul had preached without fear in Jesus' name in Damascus. And because Barnabas spoke up for Saul, the believers in Jerusalem accepted Saul as one of their own. How amazing is that? Acts 9.28 said, So Saul stayed with the believers. He moved about freely in Jerusalem. He spoke boldly in the Lord's name. See, in fact, Saul went on to spread the message of Jesus all over the part of that world. He started churches and wrote those churches letters. Those letters became books of the New Testament in our Bible today. God used Saul to do some amazing things. And God invited others like Ananias and Barnabas to be part of it too. See, Saul's life was definitely a drastic story of change. I think that's why so many people had trouble believing it at first. How does a man who's that opposed to Jesus all of a sudden have his life turned around? Ananias had to face that question. What God was asking Ananias to do was terrifying. And for Ananias, it took an incredible amount of trust. He was basically asking himself, do I believe that God could really change Saul like this? And that now God wants to use me to help him? That was a real fear Ananias had to face. And the believers living in Damascus and Jerusalem had to face that question too. They had heard and maybe even seen the effects of Saul's tear. And now they were supposed to just accept him as a follow follower of Jesus? And that's hard to do, to work alongside of him? To, to love him? What if this was an inside job? What if this was just part of his wicked plan to take down the church? This was a real fear that these believers had to face. And I'm amazed at the courage of Barnabas in this story too. In a moment when everybody was looking for clarity on what to believe, Barnabas stepped up on behalf of Saul and shared what he had seen happening in Saul's life. And that took some courage, and it ended up making all the difference. It's easy for us to make impressions about people or to believe that someone is too mean, too unkind, too rude, too whatever to change. In those cases, it's important to remember Saul's story and be amazed at what God can do when he gets a hold of a life. It's easy to let fear drive our decisions. But think about what we see in Saul's story. When we understand who God is and just what he is capable of, that can give us courage in the face of some really difficult situations. So I'm going to leave you this key question. What are you afraid of? What are the situations where you feel scared? Who are the people who cause you to pause and wonder if you can trust them? Everyone has fears. Thankfully, we don't have to face these fears on our own. When we understand the truth about who God is and what he's capable of, we can find courage to face what and who scares us. So let's pray and be thankful we can trust God no matter what might come and scare us. Let's pray. And God, we just pray for every person watching this video right now. God, help them understand that there are things that scare us people maybe that we're afraid of, things that stop us from doing maybe what you ask us to do, and we ask for courage to face those today. Just like we saw Barnabas have courage and Ananias have courage, and we got to see life transformation happen, that when we truly realize that God is real, God, we know you're real. We understand that, 
we can start living that life to reach our full God-given potential. Help us take a next step today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.